Okay, so now we know all our rules, right? We have uh, the product rule when we add exponents, the quotient rule when we subtract exponents, the power of a power rule when we multiply exponents, the product, or excuse me, the power of a product when we kind of distribute the exponent to each factor, the power of a quotient where we apply it to both upstairs and downstairs, what it means to raise something to the zero power, and how to handle negative exponents. We just flip them on their head. Give them, it's kind of like a reciprocal. So let's go ahead and use that. Um, there's a lot of school for thought on how to handle uh, expressions with negative exponents. Uh, I kind of walk back and forth. I, they basically follow all the same rules. So you can essentially follow all the same rules and then I like to save this for last. But some students like to do it at the very beginning. So I'll kind of walk both uh, uh, ideas uh, to show you there's more than one way because the idea again is you see a rule you use a rule and what we see might be different so for example let's take a look at the first one and I'm gonna do this two different ways because it kinda depends on how you want to use your rules and what you see initially when I'm looking at this I basically see my product rule on steroids right I have a big multiplication same base so I basically keep the base and I take all my exponents and I add them together, right? So there's my product rule. When I perform that addition, uh, we have a negative four to two. We basically end up with x to the negative two. And then how do we handle negative exponents? Well, we put them, right? We uh, rewrite that as a kind of a reciprocal. We put, we uh, drop it down to the bottom. So there's our answer if I see it as the product rule. However, some people like to use this rule right off the bat, right? So this x squared is a positive exponent, so it stays up in the numerator, right? And then this is a negative exponent, so it's going to flip down to the denominator. And then x to the negative 3 is a negative exponent, so it'll flip down to the denominator. So some students might actually want to use their negative exponential rule first. Now, uh, what we end up having down below is I have an opportunity to use my my product rule. So we have x squared over x to the fourth. And now I have an opportunity to use my quotient rule, giving us x to the negative 2, which we already know to be x squared. So there's two different paths. If we sat and thought about it, we can probably think of a third. It's just you see a rule and you use a rule. So don't uh, panic too much on doing things the right way. Uh, just if you see the rule, apply the rule. Some students like to apply the negative exponent right away. Uh, some of us, myself included, just I just work on the exponents. They follow all the same rules, whether they're positive or negative. And then at the very end, if I need to address a negative exponent, that's when I decide to basically flip it around. So you'll basically see that from me. So for the second one, uh, again, we have some negative exponents around. But what I see is an opportunity to use the product rule upstairs. So when I use that, right that's what I end up getting so we end up with uh, x to the third upstairs and x to the negative two downstairs now what I see is an opportunity to use the quotient rule so I'm gonna keep my base and take my top, top exponent and subtract my bottom right and that becomes x to the fifth right so that's three plus two and there's really nothing left to do there's our final answer so that expression simplifies into that. Uh, one other note again, notice how I am showing my work. I'm basically showing which rule I'm using by rewriting it the, rule, the way the rule says. So I appreciate if you guys continue to do that. As I grade your work, I can sit there and say, yep, that student sees that rule and they actually use the rule correctly. So that's the way uh, that I'm going to make sure you're doing it. Uh, for number three, uh, we have different variables and all kinds of negative exponents. So the first thing I actually see is two fractions here, right? That's a negative two times y to the negative three, y to the fourth. And in both the cases, I have an opportunity to use my quotient rule. So this is x, eight, take away negative two, right? Top minus bottom. And this is y, negative three minus four, top minus bottom. So when I subtract a negative, it's the adding the opposite. So this is x to the 10th. And negative three, take away four is y to the negative seven. And so the last thing I will do now is apply my negative exponent rule. X to the 10th is nice and positive, so it stays put. 
y to the negative 7, well that's to a negative power, so by rule it drops down to the denominator. So there's the simplification of number 3 uh, using the what I see a rule, use a rule. So I first saw not even an exponential rule, just breaking up into fractions. Then I saw the quotient rule, right, did that, and then I saw my negative exponent. And so that's how I chose to do it. Um, just to change things up, uh, this next problem, uh, I, you know, we have a kind of a crazy base, but the good news is it's the same base. So just to satisfy those students who like to move some things around first, how do I, how about I change things up and do that? So when I do this, I have this is to a negative exponent, so it's going to drop down to the denominator. This is to an ex a negative exponent, so it's going to move up into the numerator. And this is to a negative exponent, so I'll move it up to the numerator. All right, so that kind of well, hopefully uh, for those who like to see the negative exponent rule first, there you go. And now what I see upstairs is an opportunity to use my product rule. Right, and that gives us x plus 3 to the fourth all over x plus 3 squared. And then I have an opportunity to use my quotient rule. And we're left with our final answer, x plus 3 squared. So changing things up, again, you see a rule, you use a rule, and you go for it. Uh, number five, uh, again, I initially see this as two different fractions that need to be worked on. So there's the fraction 5 fifteenths and we're multiplying it to the fraction x to the negative 5. So this fraction we just uh, reduce like we normally would. 5 goes into there once and there are three times. So we're looking at the fraction 1 third. And here, right, I see this as an opportunity to use my quotient rule. Right? Keep the base, top exponent minus the bottom. So we end up with 1 third times. This is basically x to the third. So you can write your answer as 1 third times x to the third or x to the 3 over 3. Both of these are equivalent. It just kind of depends on where you want to write that numerator. Okay, so there we go. So again, see a rule, use a rule, have an opportunity to take advantage of it. Uh, last but not least, uh, we're looking at this. We have a product and it's being raised to a power. So I definitely have my power of a product. So applying that, I get a to the negative 2 to the negative 4 and b to the negative 3 to the negative 4, right? So every factor gets, uh, gets raised to that power. So the factor of a to the negative 2 gets raised to the negative 4, and the factor b to the negative 3 gets raised to the negative 4. Now I have the opportunity to use my power of a power, exponent of an exponent. So we multiply our exponents here, and we multiply our exponents there. And that gives us a to the 8th. And that gives us b to the 12th. And so there's nothing left to do. So again, negative exponents satisfy the same rules that we've been learning. Uh, see a rule, use a rule. And just make sure you're showing your work. That way I know which rules you're seeing and how you're applying them. We'll, make, uh, we'll do another tougher round with negative exponents and expressions in the next video. See you guys then.